Hey Sheepy Doodlers, how are you doing? Did you see my Wednesday drawing show this week? If you didn't, click up here to see. And in the middle of it, I was asked by Karina how to draw a jacaranda tree. I've never seen a jacaranda tree. Uh, she lives in Buenos Aires. And uh, so I looked it up quickly and, and I just kind of did something. Then Karina uh, contacted me and she'd uh, been practicing doing her own versions. And I was particularly uh, struck by this one, uh, which has the, the petals that have fallen on the ground. And that's something that you only know if you're there. And just picking something up on, uh, on Google Images is great. It gives you a, a sort of a rough idea of what's going on. But, but to be there, you, that, you get to know about the experience of the petals that are falling to the ground and that you will have the ground will be pink and lavender and purple underneath uh, the tree. So in this video I'm going to show you slightly less rushed how to paint a jacaranda tree. So I am going to be drawing this on watercolour paper. This is um, the Langton. This is nice paper. It's 140 pounds, 300 GSM so it's quite heavy. Hot press so it means it's smooth. Watercolour paper comes in all sorts of types and this is quite smooth and I use smooth because I do a lot of uh, scanning and if it's all dimply like you get sometimes uh, it doesn't scan terribly well. And what I'm going to do is to I'm going to draw out, I'm hardly touching the paper so you might not be able to see this, I'm going to draw out um, a, kind of a, a kind of a shape of a tree and there's uh, the stem or the brown the trunk <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for and and then we're gonna have the branches that are coming out but this is gonna be smothered jacarandas are smothered in blossom so uh, I'm gonna leave spaces I'm not drawing these trunks all the way at uh, these branches all the way so I'm gonna assume there's another ones that are coming like that and but that will be coming like that so it's a bit like a brain <laughs> it looks like at the moment uh, and then with maybe some of these sort of little things like that and then I'm going to get my kitchen towel always have kitchen towel at hand if you're doing watercolour and this is um, my Pentel Aquash water brush which has the water in the handle and you can see I've been doing one before uh, I didn't have the sound on <laughs> so I'm re-recording this <laughs> When you squeeze the handle, the water comes out. And it is already slightly pink, actually. So you really want nice, clear, uh, fresh water, really. So you don't have to do it from a, a, a brush like this. You can use any old brush, any old clear water. Water is water is water, generally. Um, unless you want to pay, you know, hundreds of dollars to get some special stuff that's come from an iceberg in Svalbard or something like that. So. Um, now that is kind of wet in that area and then we're going to do some wet on wet stuff. These are Windsor & Newton colours. I'm just going to add a little bit of red, red into there just to get a bit of sort of uh, maybe a bit more. We want to get this little lavender look and then I'm just going to drop this in here. And Sometimes I'm dropping, sometimes I'm just slightly squeezing the handle as well. And because it's already wet, it's going to, oh, um, it's going to just sort of spread out and do interesting things like that. Ooh, and now you have to wait for it to dry. That is the boring bit. If you get really frustrated, you can get your hair dryer out and dry it. <laughs> you can stick it in the sun or something like that. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's just so much better just to let it kind of flow and let it do its own work. You can um, you can sort of adjust it by it. Look, you can see now it's moving. You know, so I'm I'm turning the paper at different angles, so you can play with the colour by letting it uh, gravity kind of move it about and and also that will also allow the water not to pool in areas if you sort of keep moving it um, if it pools in areas then then it'll dry slightly differently as well and this is wet on wet technique that you know you can just play with forever you can see here this has got a hard edge because I painted over the edge of the water 
and so you've got all this lovely smoothness that kind of breaks into this lovely hard edge. And this is the joy of watercolour. Uh, while I'm waiting um, for it to dry, <laughs> you might be thinking, this isn't drawing! Uh, this isn't how to draw a jacaranda tree, but it is. Um, you may think this is painting, but I think watercolour is really drawing. And when you're painting, then you actually <laughs> scoop up a load of colour and splat it down and all the light and the colour is built into the paint and you are applying it to the surface. Here with watercolour, I, I'll keep saying this until the cows come home if you've heard me say it all before, the light is coming from the paper so the light, the paper is your light source and what you're doing is uh, kind of placing transparencies over the top, layers of transparent colour and that's how watercolour works. Um, here in the UK, we're coming up to Christmas time at the moment, and it's a sort of a traditional thing that uh, we give or get or whatever. The, uh, Christmas time, there is always a big tin of sweets around. <laughs> we call them sweets, you might call them candy. And they're, uh, I think they're actually all in those horrible silver wrappers now, everything's changed. But traditionally, you would sort of untwist them and uh, in fact, I have a Werther's original here. <laughs> so there's something like this, and you can see that it's like that transparent um, cellophane there, and, and they come in all sorts of colours, and my favourite are the purples. And, oh, dust all over there now, that would affect what's going on. And, and so it's like putting a transparency over the paper. You can see the light is in the paper, it's shining through that sort of yellow transparency. And that's what we do with watercolour. We are creating layers, transparent layers, over the paper, which is our light source. And I'm now bored, waiting for this, so I'm going to get my hairdryer out and dry the rest of it. If you get the hairdryer out too early, then it's going to push all the colour around. But once it's fairly settled, you know, from a distance you can just dry, and just dry the water rather than move the colour around. I'm changing to my little palette here and I'm going to get some burnt umber uh, to paint the trunk, the tree trunk. So I'm going to do this. Oh, there we are. Make sure it's in, in the camera. And I'm going to not hold it like a pencil. I'm going to hold it at the end um, and I'm going to allow the brush to kind of drag itself across the paper and um, make just slightly more interesting marks than just a brush mark so here it's just kind of dragging across and you get different thicknesses and thinnesses uh, <laughs> and it just makes it more interesting I think whereas if you're kind of obsessively holding it like a pencil um, then, then you're going to get much more sort of finer controlled lines and you know a tree is, is an organic object isn't it and it has this kind of idiosyncrasies I might put another little one in there so we're kind of drawing we're drawing the branches but you can't see them all because there are great big bunches of flowers <laughs> in front of them hiding the branches behind so you need to come back in winter time if you just want to see the branches um there we go and i'm just going to then do a little bit more and i'm going to have some make it a little bit darker on this side uh, and again there we are so and in the underneath of these branches so we're just kind of adding an extra layer some of these bits are still wet so you get a nice wet on wet effect thing going on and you know it all adds to well it's going to be a kind of an impression of a jacaranda tree really isn't it in the end so i'm going to get the hair dryer on this because I want to make sure that that uh, layer, the um, the tree trunks, I want to make sure that they are dry. Because now I'm going to start putting on, um, you know, the petal, the, the the flowers. And I'm looking into these kind of spaces between the branches, really. And 
I'm going to kind of fill those areas in first. And it's, it's really dibby dabby, isn't it? It's just splash it on. So it's not nothing terribly <laughs> artistic about that, is there? There we are. Um, and then I'll get that. I'm making that a little bit stronger. But you see, I'm squeezing the water here to try and make it a little bit thinner um, and then maybe I'm going to just put a few little blobs into there so while that's still wet then in those little areas I'm now doing kind of wet on wet so that they just become a more interesting kind of little shapes so they're not just a shape of colour they're a shape of sort of colour that's moving about oh dear I'm, go I'm gonna leave that that's okay because we're gonna do some petals down there if I get really bored with these these are kind of little puddles of water I can kind of dip dab them with my kitchen towel and these are just kind of nice shapes which are look you know darkling into thinner and whatever and 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 I, I'm just gonna kind of keep building up these layers with um, <laughs> with, with, with petals and colours and in fact I'm going to go outside the original drawing line as well so that we can um, you know, just have a softer kind of dotty edge and so some of the, some of the softness of the colour of the trees that are, are, the, are the sort of blocks of flowers that are behind the branches on the other side but are still showing through but they're sort of showing through as a kind of an impressionist blur and I'm liking this. I know when I um, first uh, did it live on the Wednesday drawing show, do go and have a look. Um, it was all a bit of a mess. It's quite a technical thing doing a live show. <laughs> but anyway, um, and, and so Corinne said, you know, how to draw a jacaranda tree. And I thought, what, what's the jacaranda tree? So I got Google up and, oh yeah, right. And so I started drawing. And, and, and in fact, the one, the one picture that came up first was pink. Uh, so somebody had obviously treated it or something in Photoshop. I think I only have a minute of camera left, so I'm just going to stop from. And now I'm back. I, I put in a funny old disc. I hope it worked. So the one I did in my sketchbook is actually quite pink. And Karina said, that looks like a cherry blossom. <laughs> I said, you just tell people it's a jacaranda and tell them long enough and how many <laughs> enough times they will start to believe you. But she's right that is a cherry blossom so if you want to know how to do a cherry blossom this is the way to do it but just do it in pink uh, and and if you if you want to know what the jacarandas are all about Karina is out in Buenos Aires um, she's looking after her mum who isn't well and so they're walking around visiting hospitals and stuff like that but she said the jacarandas are out and this is she wanted to paint them as a kind of a memory of this time and um and how to do it and and she's actually sent me a link so c come up here and have a look well i'll put the link down below as well go see it later afterwards she put a link in there um for a video it's a drone flight across buenos aires looking at all the jacaranda trees it's absolutely fabulous that's obviously the time of year to go and visit Buenos Aires in the jacaranda time. Uh, it's like going to Japan in cherry blossom time, isn't it? So, yeah, some some places just come alive. I know Brussels I went to and it was the cherry blossom time as well. It was absolutely beautiful. I don't suppose you really think of <laughs> Brussels as being a, a, a cherry blossom place, but there just were, seemed to be an awful lot of cherry blossom around. So, these are going to be all the petals that have fallen on the ground and I could leave it there but my imagination is telling me to do something else this is where I could easily completely ruin this and I'm just going to clean my brush so I'm going to get some French ultramarine so I want that to be clean as well so I get some ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna -y kind of brown that's going to get us a nice kind of grey and I'm going to try just putting a little bit of shadow in there as well. So 
So that's the tree casting shadow, and then we might want a little bit more. We might want a little bit more just sort of under there as well, and maybe just one or two. So now that we've reached this point, we can maybe do some one or two extra darker shadows on the under limbs of these branches like that. I'm going to call that it, he says, immediately starting to add lots more. I, I don't think... There should be a point where you stop. Uh, and I think that's always the hard part, is knowing where to stop. But it's kind of looking in the camera, it looks different. I want to add some extra little bits like that um, in these areas, just to add a bit more kind of definition, I suppose, to those areas that block out the the branches behind. And I'm now, um, oh, I think maybe just a tiny bit more in there, you see, it? you can always add a bit more. I'm going to call that it. I had to draw it by Jacaranda in watercolour. Thank you, Karina, for suggesting it. And uh, I hope everything's going well for you in Buenos Aires. Well, thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you want the finished images and step by step, do come and join me on Patreon. And uh, in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice. See you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.